Welcome, welcome, welcome. Greetings, greetings, greetings to everyone out there. <clears throat> well, back. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get started. We have a lot to cover today, as usual. Uh, for those who do not know me, my name is Petty Sina Teptu Rae, and I've been over a 30 year student teacher, a profound doctrine of the master teacher, known to us as Panabab Yunanan, also known as Dr. Malachi ZK York, who has been teaching us our ancient culture. We identify as Wusabat, also known as Wunawak, which stands for those who make decisions based on sound, right, reason, ability, based on the principles of Ma'at, based on the wisdom of the Hutri. In essence, our culture was about being in harmony with natural nature. Our culture was about being in harmony with natural nature. And, uh, you know, the one of the things we talk about it is the challenges that you see our people, melanated people, woolly hair people all over the globe are dealing with is due to the fact that they've gotten away from their original culture and have embraced foreign cultures you know, the Western cultures of capitalism and socialism, and communism and fascism and Marxism and all the isms that we've embraced. And we argue that this is why we're suffering, because we've gotten away from our original cultures, our original indigenous cultures of, be, of living in accordance to nature, as opposed to today's cultures that are adverse to nature. And this is the cause of our suffering. And this is why we teach 
the culture of Wusabat as the solution, as a salvation for our people, for those who take the time out to truly study that we come from a very advanced people, a very powerful people. As we see in ancient Kemet called Egypt, you see an advanced culture, a very advanced culture. And we've lost sight of that. And so our goal as students of Wusabat is to re-educate our people about our our phenomenal heritage, our origins, and that, and how we can recreate it once we give up the foreign cultures and embrace our original culture who's of Wusabat. This is what we teach. This is why we do what we do. We've been under the, the oppression of racism, and white supremacy for the last 500 years. And we say, how much longer are we going to tolerate these conditions of living under foreigners rather than rather than us do it for self? We have the power to do for self. And now we have the detailed culture of how we need to do things to bring us back to power. So this is what we what we do. This is why we're here as students of Wusabat, students of the master teacher, to, to explain to our people in detail on how to be the better you. So, with that being said, uh, it's a picture of me. <laughs> with that being said, uh, let's see. Before we get started, as all of those are familiar with us, we, we open up our discussions with a namaz, which means prayer, right? Our culture, Wusabat, is about spirituality, making contact with our ancestors who exist on a higher dimension. We always call out to our ancestors, our grandmothers, our great-grandmothers, our great-great-great-great-great-grandmothers. Uh, they always have our back, and it is important that we acknowledge them, right? We acknowledge our grandfathers, our fathers' fathers, our fathers' 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 fathers, all the way back to the Nathar. This was our way. So we were, we were always in communication with our higher dimensional family. And so we say these prayers as an acknowledgement to them, right? Not the unseen spirit forces that religions have taught our people to call on. Unseen spirit forces, this is what we do not do. We call on our ancestors that you knew. You knew your mother or you know your mother. You, a lot of us knew our grandmothers. And we know she had a mother and she had a mother and she had a mother. So this is who we're talking to. We're talking to our bloodline that we know exists, not unseen spirits that or ancestors of the Bible or the Quran that we have no clue whether that they exist or not. In fact, they've never been proven to exist. But we, you know your grandparents existed. And that's who we call on. And that's what our prayers are directed towards, communicating with them. So let's get started. Now, for those who know, we do our, our prayers also in Namaz and our Lahaj language called Sabaic. And then I translate it, uh, you know, for English. So follow along. But they cloud Namaz at Wufad called Amans Kem Papa'at. Panan Safa Kawun. Pasawat Wupa Tara. Si Kawuna Nazula Leha Enkum. Manan Sabat Wusaid. Ama hadayan un shafayun Maneh salafu wunataru Aju layeh nafasukum Afukshane kawun kuma Pasawa wu patara This book is the truth in the way. It was sent down for you all from Sa'at Sabat Wu Sa'at Star Constellation as a guidance and a healing from your ancestors and overseers. Return to your own, accept what is yours, the truth in the way. And noon tower and cum lehe penan shafeun wu alaj. And noon tower and cum lehe nasuinu. And noon tower and cum lehe ashuk. And cum at the salafunu. And noon at the karat ukum. And noon talub nasar kuma. And noon talub nasar kuma. And so noon sayim nataru. And so noon salafunu. And noon at the munwapu. We thank you all for this healing and cure. We thank you all for not forgetting us. We we thank you for Asha. You are our ancestors. We are your children. We seek your help. We seek your help. Help us, divine overseers. Help us, our ancestors. We are almost bowed. Anu. Atun. 
Very good. All righty then. All right, so before we get started, as we always do, we go over the core principles of Wu Sabat slash Wu Nawat for those who may not know the basis of our culture, right? The basis of our culture is, is based around our core principles. And for those who do not know, you know, we, we go over this uh, throughout all of our discussions because our discussions are centered around the core principles, right? Uh, because as Sabians, we live according to these principles that we live by these principles. So that's why we do a, do our best to go over it so that all students of Wusabat know how what, it, what are the guidelines of how we live, the principles we live by, which is extremely important. This is what's going to make us the great people that we are by adhering to these core principles, right? Principle number one is a shack. A shack stands for divine love. Divine love, being in, uh, in tune with the creative force itself, existence itself, a shack, is key, right? We did a discussion on that. So for those who have not seen it, check it out. And if you have, watch it again, as I always say. Principle number two is resurrection, right? As 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 Sabians, our goal is to become goddesses and gods again by learning to open our third eye as our ancestors used to have prior to 6,000 years ago, where they were in tune. By opening your third eye, you then become in tune with your ancestors again. You'll be able to communicate with them directly to get information to assist you as you walk through this 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 mortal life, right? Uh, and in fact, by opening your third eye, you become immortals. Actually, check out discussion on that as well. Principle number three is the wisdom of the Hutri and Maat. The Hutri stands for our divine mind. Maat stands for order. We did lectures on that, so definitely check those out. Principle number four is relationships, right? As as an African melanated people, as native people, we've always lived of, for, and by each other. This is how our culture was set up. As I always say, we're not capitalists, we're not socialists, we're not communists, we're not fascists, we're not Marxists, we're not no, none of those isms. <laughs> Our culture was being in tune with, with each other, not exploiting one another. Uh, and check out lecture we did on that. Principle number five is morphic resonance slash matrix. Morphic resonance stands for sounds, colors, vibrations, materials. And matrix are the manifestations of those things, right? Principle number six is Leviathan. This is what we're at war with. Leviathan, the spirit forces of Leviathan stands for moon culture aka religion aka western culture okay we did a discussion of that so check it out not to mention the master wrote like six seven books just on that one subject it's very important we understand leviathan principle number seven is soul and spirit your soul is your emotional force your spirit is your life force definitely check the discussions we did on that principle number eight is health the first key to health is a positive mind right sunlight we recommend a lot of sunlight as as melanated people. Water, the body is is seven percent water. Fasting at least once or twice a week. We we recommend the herbal diet as Dr. Savius taught us. Exercise that's key for health. Remedic breathing. A lot of people don't know about the science of remedic breathing. We wrote a book on that. Check it out. Meditation, concentration, prayer, and chanting. As we always say, health is not just what you do physically but it's also what you do spiritually. Our people are suffering health-wise because they neglect the spiritual components of health. You can't have one without the other. You must master the both. And we did a discussion on that, so definitely check that lecture out. And principle number nine is pa'ut, acknowledging existence itself. We call it pa'ut, all. You can't add to the all because where would you get it from? You can't take from the all because, you know, where would you put it, right? Existence is. And and existence exists within what we call the smash circle, cycles, perpetual cycles within existence. Nature is based on cycles. And the creation energy itself is called achach, translates to ether, right? That's the creation energy itself. We come from non-ether energy that grew existence. Now, 
As Sabians, we have three primary goals. The goals of students of Wusabat, our three goals is goal number one is to raise the self, goal number two is to fight Leviathan, and goal number three is to work to build Sabatia. Now, in goal number one in raising the self, you must become born again, as the Christians teach, by learning the culture of Wusabat and live it, right? Give up the old for the new, give up the old for the new. The key, and that's one of the hardest things for our people to do is to give up what we learn in this culture and don't bring that baggage over into the culture of Wusabat. A lot of us do it. We shouldn't. You have to give up those ways we learn here in the West so that you can embrace a new way of thinking in Wusabat. That's key. If you want to grow within the culture and part of that growth one uh, is correcting your name. Why we say correct your name to a Sabia name, right? Your dress code, identifying more cultural, wearing cultural clothing. That's extremely important when it's you know appropriate, of course. Uh, learn to speak our Lahaj, our language, Sabaic. That's key. And you must study our doctrine every day, which builds your sound right reasoning skills. This is that's that's how you're gonna make those intelligent decisions, those better decisions by mastering our doctrine. By t it teaches you what to do and what you should not be doing, right? Then you must practice and master our daily rituals to turn yourself inside out. That's how you're going to learn to open your third eye by mastering the rituals, speaking a language. Though all of that's key. And you must always be positive. There's no wor wor worthwhile objective unless you're positive. You must have a positive mind. Okay. Now, number two is the second goal is to fight Leviathan. Okay, so we're at war with Leviathan, the spirits of six ether. This includes working to free Pat, working to free Dr. Malachi ZK York, promoting Wusabat, become student teachers, and fight the six strongest weapons of Leviathan, which are our ignorance that Leviathan feeds off our fear, it feeds off our anger, Leviathan feeds off of our ego, it feeds off of bloodshed, our lusts and desires and lies and deceptions. All of those things that we do, it gives life to the spirits of Leviathan. This is why you must purge these, these personality traits out of yourself in order to, to live the culture with Sabbat. Number three, work to build Sabbat here. That's our third goal. We must have our own communities to, so that we can live our own culture. There's nothing more important than that, right? That's how we can develop ourselves by being under our own systems. So we work to support each other, in business, each other in business. We help each other reach positive goals. We help to build our culture. We must set up a landing zone for Panathoto in Africa, which means we need land in Africa that would be supported by an African government. And Ashuk is the key to accomplish all our goals. Now, what it means to be a Sabian. One, so being a someone who is thoughtful and cares, someone who is helpful and honest, someone who is responsible and hardworking, someone demands justice and honorable, someone who is righteous and humble, someone who is excited and cheerful, someone who is loving and peaceful, someone who is kind and considerate, and someone who is neat, clean, and orderly. Our purpose as Sabians is to liberate ourselves from adverse forces. One, you must take action each and every day to free yourself of six, to free yourself of six ether spirits inside and out, which includes black people who are possessed by these spirit forces. Three, two, acknowledge and fight six ether from promoting capitalism, the gay agenda, miscegenation, the so-called equality of the races, and racism, white supremacy. And three, learn, live by, and promote the law slash rules of natural nature, and each one teach one family. Word of advice, do not judge this doctrine by watching the behavior of Panabab Yunanan nor his students. Judge this doctrine by the effectiveness of the information, aka affirmation that you personally put to practical use. This doctrine is based on self-authentication. Know that we are not preachers, but teachers who are dedicated to answering questions until there is a meeting of the minds between teacher and student who can then work in unity which is the only solution to our problems. Quote, what you do for yourself in kind depends on what you think of yourself in kind. And what you think of yourself in kind depends on what you know of yourself in kind. 
And what you know of yourself in kind depends on what you was taught about yourself in kind. Quote, until the lion has the historians, the hunter will always be the hero. And last, the negative mind talks of what it can't and will not do for self and kind, always complain about who they don't like or trust, whereas the positive mind always maintains the peace by not complaining about that in which they do not like, but focus on finding solutions to their problems, never allowing obstacles to get in their way of growth. All righty then. So let's get started with today's discussion. The three levels of consciousness. The three levels of consciousness. All right. Now, when it comes to this topic, the master teacher has uh, introduced this, this, this concept to us. Uh, about the three levels of consciousness is extremely important. The average human individual has no idea about the three levels of their consciousness, right? They know everyone is aware of their normal level of consciousness. People have heard about the subconscious mind, but they really don't comprehend it, nor do they study or learn anything about it. And they totally are not aware of what we call the super, the super conscious level of the mind. And so it is imperative. <laughs> it is important of the utmost importance uh, to understand this in your development, to, to comprehend oneself. One must understand their level of consciousness. This is what's causing all of the problems with our people is because they have no idea of their mental capacity, their mental potential. One of the problems with slavery was it was designed to dumb our people down, right? They outlawed us learning anything. They, they literally did their best or tried their best to erase our, our consciousness, to erase our memory of who and what we are. Once you understand the levels of consciousness that exist within your character, this will give you the ability to remember, to, to, to regain knowledge of your origins. That's why this subject is so important. This is something that you know our adversaries are not going to teach. They don't teach this in, the West, in Western culture. And they're not going to teach us this. <laughs> It, become, it is our responsibility to understand the importance of this topic. Now, with all that being said, as you guys see, this, these are the, image, uh, uh, the images of the Morzaku, right? The one here to my looking at the screen on our far uh, left, that would be Razun. The one in the middle is Zanun. And the one on the far right would be uh, Zakun, right? The masters who work in conjunction with the master teacher, Yanun. Okay, so uh, also family, as I always say, it's very important to ask questions, 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 stimulate thought, thought, thought pertaining to the topic matter, of course, we're talking about consciousness, the different levels of consciousness, and how to tap into those levels of consciousness. That's extremely important. The master teacher is, has written many different books on this topic uh, to to help us understand this, this 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 concept itself. Okay, because as the master has explained to us. The reason why he came here was for our own mental resurrection. <laughs> and so a part of the process of our mental resurrection is to comprehend our higher states of consciousness, right? That's a process of our mental resurrection is to comprehend it. So also uh, just to... Uh, I, now, I'm, I'm about to read from this particular book I've read from many times before, The Science of Healing. This book came out 
around two, uh, nine, uh, 1996 or seven or so, the master was specifically focusing on spiritual development and which, which requires the development of your consciousness in order to heal yourself. So if you have any kinds of Ill, Ill, illness, right? The way you learn to heal yourself is by developing your consciousness. It gives you the ability to heal yourself. You know, and so this is just one of the books that the master has written pertaining to this topic about healing. I highly recommend the current book that we have out, one of our newer books, the actual facts number 46, called Intelligent Design, Divine Design, and Plot and Aliens. In fact, if you combine the the, the data that's in this book, The Science of Healing, with that actual facts, you'll find that the information is just off the charts, extraordinarily profound when it comes to spiritual awareness and knowledge to help all of us develop ourselves. So I highly recommend the study of it. So now in going over this, let's get started with we're going to start with this, and we're going to jump around from book to book that the master teacher had put out on this on this topic, so that you guys will have a clear comprehension of the different levels of consciousness and how to develop yourself spiritually in regards to that. Right. So here he talks about the wisdom that the elders taught were divided into two classifications. So this was it was talking about how the masters was on this planet in ancient times and they were educating people, you know, on a planet, our ancestors, the masters were educating them to initiate them into the higher levels of existence. Okay. So that's what uh, this section here was talking about. Uh, and so he talks about there was 24 elders established mystery schools uh, to teach this knowledge. These schools were in pyramids and certain temples found in the in the places I just mentioned a little earlier. He master was talking about the different um, temples all over the globe. They were the masters were teaching. The twenty four elders took a, a few advanced souls to whom they revealed the inner teachings of the scriptures and the universe. Take for instance the science of the circle and the square, the science of creation, the science of life, the mysteries of life have always been divided in order to meet the needs of the world. In essence, these select few were taught the great laws of nature and about the creative force, right? Papa, these are old terminology. So if you see it, I'll skip over that to give people the current ter terminology. So we say Papa or we say what I ate. Okay. And so <clears throat> this this was the goal of these um, schools, right? Of, of learning to to uh, increase your level of consciousness. And so we go on to say, we are all striving for perfection. We are not perfected yet. The first step necessary to restore perfection on the body is to instill complete faith in the creative force, Papa Ut, and your ancestors, Panathoto. You must go through these schools of learning if you have not uh, yet, not started yet. You have a long way to go. <laughs> the way that the disciple travels is called the journey of life. As he or she, as a traveler walking the path, is called the walker. Through uh, his teachings, the selected one is called disciple and his teacher is called what we call um they said uh this is an older word shack but we say uh, mukdal that means an elder a mukdal okay which means a teacher of the right way having been taught the laws of life the disciple is expected to follow the teachings until he or she reaches the ultimate test after which they become an 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 upright being, male or female, a perfect master. As was said, all the prophets and some of their disciples were taught the mysteries. Okay. And when you talk about prophets, that's the biblical terminology, but this is a reference to because the prophets were, were characterized after our ancestors who lived in ancient uh, 
you know, Kemet, Egypt, and Nubia, who were masters in, in back in those days during the pyramid times. Okay. Now it says, in selecting the advanced souls who were prepared to receive the higher teachings, many rigid tests needed to be passed before the door to wisdom opened. And so it is still today. Okay. For, so those who, who want to move into the high levels of consciousness, those who want to become in tune with their higher levels of consciousness, there is a process that we go through, right? So it says, within the mystery schools, there was a guardian at the gate of the inner temple. No one could pass by him to enter the temple, uh, to, en to, to the inner knowledge, unless he or she could give a certain sign, a secret word, a certain grip, only known by certain brothers who are who are in ignorance as well as the intellect. Only the disciples who were worthy would know. Having remembered these secrets from teachings given by the Mugdal, the elder, while the disciple was in a trance, was in a trance, for his consciousness would have been spiritually unfolded. In trance, many truths were revealed. If the disciple did not remember, then he or she was not was not yet ready, and he or she was turned away from the greater mysteries. Now, so so, uh, part you know it, these are certain initiations, right? One of the things that one has the ability to do in this. This, this, when we talk about trance, uh, uh, another state would be almost in a sleep state when you're in a highly meditated state, or you go into a sleep state and you go into like your subconscious mind into the next realm called the plane of force. And we're going to talk about that. This is where you have the ability to meet the master. This is an ability that we have, and one can receive training, but the key is. If you do this in that state and you come back to waking consciousness, you have to have the ability to remember. And that's and and how to remember it would be based on where you're vibrating at. Because many people who have experiences, what they call lucid dream, dreaming or out-of-body experiences, and when they wake up, they don't remember it. They don't remember those experiences. And that's due to the fact that their 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 um their body, their 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 mind, uh the cells within their consciousness is not vibrating at the rate it needs to be. This is we this is why we do the spiritual practices, the meditations, the concentrations, eating right, positive thinking, all of those things are, are necessary to raise your consciousness, to raise your vibration so that your consciousness would expand, your memory will increase because it actually gives you access to the subconscious mind. So that, that's important to keep in mind. So then we go on to say here. In this process, again, for those who are on the path to expanding their consciousness, right? The three levels of your consciousness, the, your normal consciousness that you're awake, listening to me. Then you have your subconscious, which is your subconscious is activated during sleep state, right? So when you're dreaming, that's your subconscious at work. Your subconscious also controls your voluntary, involuntary systems of the body, like your heart rate and your digestive system, your circulatory system. That's being controlled by high levels of your mind that our normal consciousness is not in tune with. So your spiritual development is learning how to connect to these other layers of your mind. So like I said, when you are asleep and you're dreaming, that's your subconscious mind at work. And the goal is for you to learn how to become lucid in your dreams, where you where you merge your consciousness with the subconscious, where they become in tune with each other. 
you do that through the rituals I, I, I speak of. So let's keep going. Each disciple was taken separately into the mystery school, into the inner temples. He or she was left alone and their initiation was definite and divine. When the disciple passed all of their tests, they came out bearing a new name and a new understanding. They was purged of corruption and emerged powerful. The disciple understood existence of the creative force. The disciple understood the law of reward and punishment under the parable of the pen that served you that would serve you well. The parable of the pen goes this way, family. You have a pen in your suit pocket throughout the day. The pen serves you well. When you arrive home, you take the pen out of your pocket and put it in the, dre the, dress the dressing table and thank the pen. And then another day comes and you put on your brand new white suit. You place the same pen in your pocket and it leaks, causing a big stain. When you take out of when you take it out of your pocket, do you curse the pen, or should you say, <laughs> uh, meaning thank the creative force? You know, should so that that's the lesson. <laughs> should you should you curse the pen or thank the creative force for allowing the, the pen to do what it was able to do during the time that it did the things that it did for you, the positive things. That's the key. All right. So now in accepting the law of reward and punishment, your third eye is open, which I will explain uh, later on in the scroll. Now, the disciple also understood well the laws of nature and how to use them in their life, both constructively and destructively. The laws of gravitation. Everybody attracts every other body with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their mass and invertly proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. That's dealing with gravity, family. That's the thing with being on a third density versus the other uh, uh, density rates. Now we talk about the smack circle and we're here in the third density on the bottom. And the third density is we exist in a realm, in a realm that is dominated by gravity. Gravity is what holds us down to the to the ground. The goal when you're moving into the higher dimensions, right? A fourth density, a fifth density, all the way up to ninth density. What you'll notice is the gravity is less and less as you move higher and higher into the other densities. So you would have to learn the goal of raising your consciousness is learning how to reverse what we call your polarity, where you become less dense and you're not subject to gravity. That's the key in order to exist in higher dimensions. So the master speaks of this in the book called The Man from the Planet Risk. And I want to jump over there real quick. This right here is the book, The Man for the Planet Risk, and the master addresses this concept that I'm just talking about, okay? And it's very important that we that you understand this concept of moving into the uh, into higher levels of density, okay? And the concept of being on an earth plane versus being in a, in a fourth density realm and higher. Here's a question in this particular book. Again, this book is The Man from the Planet Risk. Which place? 115, just so you guys can see it. This book right here, Man from the Planet Risk, okay, that we're reading from. Okay, so now, question. Do Riskians do things for recreation? So now he's talking about here the Riskians. What lifestyle do they have on their planet? Okay. Answer, yes. We have music, dance, and watch holographic TV. However, we don't have pets and don't subject anything there. 
Our ego doesn't depend on the subjection of creatures. There is no divorce because there is no marriage. There is no sin because they have let legacy and depend on it for their existence. There are no wars and no killings. So <laughs> imagine the lifestyle that they're living on that planet <laughs> compared to Earth, right? Okay. This says a question. Are there female riskians? Answer, yes. There are female riskians in the physical form. Like when they came in the form of a well-made man, like when Nusku, that's the angel Gabriel who came, who uh, he came when he was a man. When he was Gabriel, uh, he was an Anunnaki. Question. Since Riskians don't have a genetic makeup, do the females look also alike? Answer. Yes. However, only the Denier take on physical forms. So the females, I guess, you know, they like we see the image of the the males. Like you said they those guys look all alike. So and the females look alike too, I guess. You know, <laughs> the master haven't showed us the picture of those risking kind of females uh, yet. Interesting, but okay. So he says um, the riskians are at a state where they have given up emotions on a personal feeling or the personal feeling. Uh, it is with the information that you become more mental and less physical, right? So as you raise your consciousness, this is where we're moving towards while we're talking about the different levels of consciousness. In order to exist in their realms, you have to raise your consciousness. You have to become in tune with your higher consciousness. That's what we're talking about here, right? It says that is why on risk, the beings are held down on the planet by will. And if they want to go over there, they can walk, levitate, or just change into energy. The planet is predominantly controlled by magnetism. Unlike the earth, which spins on an axis and everything is held down to it by gravity. So you see the difference? Earth is a planet that holds you down by gravity. So the forces here are much more dense than when you go to a planet like Ris, which is existing in a parallel universe, and the vibrations and, and, and energies there are much more um, refined, and their the energies are faster, more potent. And and so in order for us to exist there, you have you have to be um you have to be existing as if you're on a, um, how can I, well, he's going to talk about it. You know what? Let's keep, let's go. Question. Could people from earth live on a planet rest? Answer. Yes, but not in the state you're in. You are unworthy. You must first elevate to a certain level. As I have mentioned earlier, to be able to raise your level of vibration. Even then you still have to be groomed. The closest thing to this experience is where you astral project during your sleep, where you have moved through different density levels. In that state, your molecules can be sped up and you can transform into a ship. So now, in order for humans to be able to uh, live in that realm, uh, you have to be almost like your astral body, which is a higher vibration of yourself. So he has an image here, how the human, the person is sleeping, but the spirit part of them is coming out of the body, right? We we, we talked about that many times uh, in the Doctor Strange, right? So when you go back to the Doctor Strange movie and they show him being pulled out of his body, the master is, is separating his spirit from his physical body. This is the state that we can exist in on a planet like Ris. <laughs> this is what the master is saying. You can't, you your keep in mind your physical body is made of the elements of the earth. Your physical body is made of the dense elements of the earth. So the elements or in risk are more refined. They're not the same type of element to a process. So you can't use a dense body to live on a planet like risk. 
you have to be in a in a high in a, a more refined uh, spiritual like material body. It's still matter. It's still material. It's just it's just um, a higher vibration density vibration than than the physical body. So in order to be in tune, this is the key. That that spirit body here of Doctor Strange has its own lay, layer of consciousness. This is where your higher layer layer of consciousness is. But humans are not in tune with it. Humans are only in tune with their physical body, and they're not they're not in tune with their spiritual body, their energy body. It exists, but no one's in tune with it. This is the goal of the teachings of Wusa Bat. You know, is to learn how to become in tune with your energy body again. To raise your consciousness to that, to that, to those levels. Now, for those who can do that, right? As the master says, for those who who don't learn to do that, this is why people are trapped in this density. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Um, do 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 do. So now, question, what are density levels and how do you transfer the body into a, into a ship? Answer, density levels are the different dimensions that beings vibrate on. There are nine different density levels all together. So guys, when we, um, we saw, when we look at the smack circle, we see the nine different density levels, right? From the third density all the way up to the ninth density. Okay. Uh, let's see. Then he says the body can be turned into a ship by utilizing the seven seats or chakras of the body. At each of these seats is a gland. As I said before, you must learn how to vibrate on a certain tone. When you do this, all these seats or glands line up and vibrate, giving you the ability to turn into energy. These seats are your secondary set of senses that help you stay in tune with the spiritual world. You still have them, yet they are latent in you. It is very easy to ascend to the spiritual plane during sleep because this is the time the spiritual body is active and the physical body is inactive, right? So many people experience going out of body. Many people, when they go to sleep, they experience going out of body. And so the goal of all students of Wusabat is to learn how to do that consciously. Because when you go to sleep, your consciousness shuts down. So you, you have to maintain your, your state of consciousness, which is what we're talking about here. How to maintain your state of consciousness when your body goes into a sleep state. This is why we meditate, because that's what meditation does. It simulates a sleep state. Where when you're meditating, you blank your mind, you go into blackness, and you let your body drop. As if you're letting your body go into a sleep state, but you're, you're still, your consciousness is still active. And so when you're meditating, you're just in blackness, you're in blackness, you're in blackness. And you stay in blackness. And let your body shut down. And then once you learn how to master that, you can feel the separation. You can, because you'll eventually become in tune with your spiritual body. Then you realize your spirit energy body is, is there. And you'll be merging that. And once you become in tune with your spirit body, you'll then start, your consciousness is merging now with the spirit body. You're, you're shifting your consciousness away from your physical body and you're moving it now to merge with your spirit body. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay. So now, where are we at? So here's another book the master put out that deals with this, this topic. This is called El Mugaraj. The name of this book is page eight. El Mugaraj. Okay, this book came out. 
probably this is three. It had three editions to it. This book was uh, was written uh, as a ritual on why we built the pyramids on our land, and the, and what the pyramids were designed for. Designed for was to help us in raising our consciousness. Okay, very important uh, book, extremely important book to study when it comes to overstanding consciousness. In retrospect to the pyramid and, 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 and things of that nature. So here, I want to read this. It says, and, and this is talking about uh, developing yourself spiritually. It says, in, in an effort to realign ourselves with the Nathar, all from the primordial waters, the Nathar, we're talking about the Kamunu, our parents, and our ether ethereum parents, the Sedeptu, the life forces, and Sahem, and find our way home through the energies as ether on into the balanced universes as cell life form beings, universal Ba, to give and, and sustain uh, life, Neb, or Nabab, or spiritual master of individuals' best master, physical image of a deity, protect by protect by the ba, the inner soul, the ba, gives life and the bad master, spiritual master sustains your ka, your etheric double or spiritual body, and the sa, which is protect or guard or who, the nathar of orphrey in, in Quebec, the shadows or sachem, the chi, energy, from the root seat. Okay, and this sachem, that's what the Chinese call chi. And he's talking about that it starts at the root seat. He says here, you have to learn to pull this energy up through your spine. This is how you open up your energy centers. Okay, work as a warning, warning, warning. Do not do any spiritual work in the negative mind. Never do any spiritual rituals in the negative mind. Warning, warning. Never do any spiritual rituals when you're on drugs. Warning, warning. Never do any rituals while you're on alcohol. Warning, warning, never do any spiritual rituals when you're physically sick, when the body's physically sick. Do not do that. Because keep in mind, when you're doing rituals, you're heightening your energy, your spirit energy. It, it acts like a, a magnetic uh, energy, and it'll attract lower forces. It will attract lower forces. And we're going to talk about when you're doing spiritual work, how do you prevent lower forces uh, from influencing you in a negative way. The master has written several books on this one subject. Real quick, um, just to give you an idea, the book to read on how to protect yourself from negative spirit forces is this, is this part to that right here. The mind's eye is dedicated to explaining how to protect yourself from the negative forces, especially when you're doing spiritual work. How to protect your mind's eye because of all the things that have been implanted within our subconscious. There's a lot of trauma that's been embedded in us, and it's in our DNA. And we're connected to ancestors of ours who are negative. They're the cause of a lot of our bad habits. So how to override them? This book, and Nassar put out another book that addresses that that this particular subject matter extremely extraordinarily important that um one and let me see it was another one this right here these two books were written to teach you how to protect yourself from negative spirit forces this book right here, actual fact number 29, Tabkus Wu Tabrus, Tabkus Wu Tabrus, Reflection and Projection, Reflection and Projection, just to keep your mind. So when you're doing spiritual work, you see they're giving images how the body is coming out of his body, spirit coming out of the body. Spirit hovering over the body, 
Okay, the master is 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 getting into this subject matter again. Spirit coming out of the body, out of the body, right? You must learn how to do this, but you must learn how to protect yourself when you're doing spiritual work, right? These are negative demons trying to influence her out of the body. Negative demons. You have to know, learn psychic self defense to protect yourself when you're doing spiritual work. And these particular two books were written for that for that purpose. So this is the actual facts number 29. It's called Reflections and Projections and the part that I called The Mind's Eye. And these two books were written for that. So I, I just wanted to put that in your mind. When we're dealing with elevating your consciousness and when you're doing spiritual work, you have to protect yourself from lower forces that want to possess you. So because because when you're doing spiritual work, you create like a you you you're like a magnet to to spirit beings, positive and negative. And you have to learn how to block the negative. And that's by staying in a positive mind. That's why I keep saying positive mind. You can't do any spiritual work unless you have a positive mind. Muy saw family. You got to keep that in mind. Always think of the the Nathar. The Mozaku, put pictures of your grandmother up, your great-grandmother. If you have your great-great-grandmother, put their images up. Always have the mind of your ancestors. Why are you think in ancient Kemet, we put these big old statues. They made big old statues of themselves so that we would always know and we knew what our ancestors looked like. That's why they did that in ancient Egypt, right? And so... What we got? Um, Amen. Hotep. The third. This is why they did it. So we know Amen Hotep the third lived. He lived like um. When he lived? Oh, about thirty five hundred years ago. Amenhotep the third lived like thirty five hundred over three thousand five hundred years ago, and you, we know what he looks like. That's why they did. That's why our ancestors did images of themselves, so you know what they look like. So when you call on them, you know who to call on. Unlike these religions, you don't know who to call on. So our ancestors had images of themselves. That's why we did all of this. We know what he looked like. We know what his his hamatet, his wife looked like. We have their images, their pictures. This is why when the religion of Islam came in, they like destroy the pictures, destroy the images, and cut us off from our ancestors, and got us calling on unseen spirit forces, unseen gods. So I just wanted to point that out because, you know, it's extremely important for us to understand. So let's go back to the Mugaraj scroll, right? And so this word, the body in, in our Lahaj language, Sabaya is called khat or khatat, okay? Khatat, the physical body. That's what they call it in ancient Kemet, khatat, or say khat. And it meant physical, the physical body, or the dead body. So our ancestors understood that the physical body of the earth body was a dead body. It was a dead, like the minute you're born, you're born where you're growing up, you grow, you grow into a point where you start decaying. So this is the realm of the dead to our, to our ancestors. They knew that the physical body was, this was the realm of the dead. Your body was synonymous with death. If you was if you was trapped in a realm like this, the third density. So everything they were doing was to develop themselves spiritually in ancient in ancient Kemet was to develop themselves spiritually, right? Back then in this timeline, so that they can exist on a higher abode in a high in a more refined energy body. That was the goal in a spirit body. So uh Keep that in mind. But you have to be able to move your consciousness 
into those higher levels of a mentality. That's what we're talking here. So let's let's keep going. Uh, let's see. So we must first attune ourselves with the elements that are in and around us daily through each awakened, sleeping, and fleeting moment as we uh, elude ourselves that time is in motion. Time does not move forward, nor has it come from behind. It has always been. Time does not ascend up, upward, not has it, nor has it descended from above. Time is now. Now is the time. Time is. Then now is not then. We must learn the realities of existence and reverse the process of self-deterioration, de both physical, physically and mentally, right? Because we're deteriorating in the physical realm. <laughs> and we have to learn, you have to learn how to reverse that process with which the conferring fact become a part of all. The existence of our being is that we exist. And with that confirmation, existence is as we are. Time is as we, we be. All is, all acts, all does. All things are a part of all. On into allness. The baby of allness is found in the womb of quantum physics, born inside out in etheric existence. So, as a devoted Tamarian of the ancient Tamarian and mystic order of the Nathar, Afrati, Atum Re, known as Amanubi Ro'akta, you must be initiated back into the sacred brotherhood and sisterhood of the Nathar Shilu Natharu. You must become a child of the Natharu, which will make you a Nathar, from which they derive the word nature. Okay. Question. Why did I build the pyramids? Answer. The pyramids were built for the purpose of, of making a connection with our elders, the ancient ones, the Nathado. So that's why the master built the pyramids. To, to, it was a, it was, pyramids were literally a communication device. Okay. Then he goes on to say, let's see. The pyramid was also a tool to help humans advance into a higher state of consciousness. Every body, there, every body, to my physical body, there is a TP Hess, which is your aura, which is an electromagnetic field. The human's TP Hess, the aura, has a negative electrical charge. If they are to advance into Amun, which is the ancient and mystic order of the Nathar, uh, Atum Re, and overcome matter, then the individual must change his or her aura to a more positive electrical charge. And the pyramid is a tuning device to help humans, children of the Nathar, to achieve this change. Okay? So you have to correct your aura. It's in a negative polarity. Our aura, the negative polarity, what happened? What neg is, uh, is negative polarity is a releasing energy, right? So when the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, you're always releasing energy. That's why you get tired at the end of the day, and then you have to go go to sleep and recharge. When you're in a sleep state, your body is now taking in what we call sechen energy, so to recharge your cells. So when you wake up, and then you go throughout your day. The problem is is that you, you stay in the negative polarity, always releasing energy, not knowing how, how to harness the energy, to bring the energy into yourself while you're still in, in, in the awakened state. Because no one does the rituals. Humans don't know how to do spiritual rituals, so they don't harness that energy, that, that sachem energy, that chi energy into their bodies. And that's how it makes you more consciously aware once you learn how to harness this. That's why the master built the pyramid, because the pyramid literally harnesses this energy. And if you walk around a pyramid while this energy is, is emanating, it charges your body. And it floods your body with this sechem energy. 
So let's keep going. He goes on, it goes on to say that um this is that this is an image of the energy body, right? Your aura. Uh let's see. Let me skip here. It says if humans are to advance into the spiritual world, then they must learn to overstand tachyon energy. The pyramid refocuses light into the three magnetic fields of tachyon energy, which gives humans an opportunity to study this energy. Uh, with tachyon motion, all motions have a path length of 140, 240 degrees. Unlike the electron spin, there is no centripetal force, thus no gravity. This is how you break gravity, family. You have to reverse the electron spin the master was talking about. If you learn how to reverse the electron spin within your body, you, you literally can levitate. But you have to harness energy. You have to harness that succumb energy into the body. You have to learn how to harness it into the body. And this is how you reverse that polarity. You can reverse your polarity because the human body right now is in a negative polarity. Like I said, you're constantly releasing energy. And because you're doing that, it keeps you grounded. You're stuck by gravity because you don't have enough energy to reverse the, 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 um, the energy field here. So it goes on to say, let's see, uh, unlike the electron spin, there is no centripetal force, thus no gravity. Now, tachyons are of the nature whereby they may pass through matter and or other fields. Tachyon is also ether energy, family, without being affected or affecting such fields of matter. If you were to look at the rain dance of the Hopi Native Americans called American Indians, who got it from their true fathers, the Dogon tribe of Mali, Africa, their original descendants, who got it from the beings they called the Numos, meaning the masters of the water, whom the Hopis call Kachina, coming from Hopi or Kachina, meaning supernatural beings. You would find that the same clocking action of the tachyon pairs is used in, the, in their rain dance and the dances of the whirling dervish, or Moors of North Africa, the Sufi. Okay, so when they move in a certain in a in a certain motion, they generate that energy. Is what the master is talking about. When you watch those rituals, you generate energy because you're harnessing ether into the body. Because ether is all out throughout the atmosphere. It's just that we don't we forgot how to harness that into ourselves, and that's how you raise your consciousness. You move your consciousness into the higher levels of consciousness. This is this is the process. So he's he's just explaining that process, but I wanted to go down a little bit more. So another reason, so another important reason why the pyramids were built was to help humans change th their TP hiss or aura to a more positive frequency. The pyramid is an electromagnetic capacitor designed to help the individual achieve this. It is a tune tank antenna acting as an interdimensional communication device. You hear that? The, the pyramid acts as an interdimensional communication device. It allows you to communicate interdimensionally with your ancestors because <laughs> it, 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 floods, it floods the atmosphere with this positive energy. And if you do the rituals, the rituals the master was teaching us, the Mugaraj ritual, where you walk around it and, and a certain, you know, having. Uh, connected to a certain tone, you your your body be flooded with this with this tachyon energy he's talking about, or what we call sachem. Okay, so the pyramid refocuses light into the reverse spiral of the electrons, uh, which is the positive fill. The pyramid is an interdimensional communication device given to humans so that they may learn of the positive frequency. And make contact with their oversoul and being. So you can your oversoul is your super consciousness. Your oversoul is your super consciousness. That's the high level, highest level of your consciousness. 
okay? As mentioned previously, the parabit is an antenna designed to refocus light into the two directional electron spirals, the negative field of the physical and the positive field of the spiritual. So you have to reverse the electron flow. You have to reverse the electron flow in the body. So this is this is an atom. This is an electron. This this in the middle right here, and it spins. This electron spins around the the nucleus of the atom. Okay, what one what one has to learn how to do is reverse that flow. And and you do that through the rituals consistently. You know, it takes. Very, it had to be very dedicated, very consistent. I'm not saying it's easy because <laughs> you also have to block yourself from negative spirit forces. That's why I recommended the books when you're doing spiritual work because you're talking about you know months on end. 30 days will really get your body in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a really good celeste state. And I say anywhere from 30 to 90 days if you're consistent. That's the hardest thing is blocking distractions. That's been my challenge. How to overcome the distractions. Once one can learn how to overcome distractions, then it becomes easy to, to achieve this. But you can do it. It's definitely possible, family. But let's go back. As mentioned previously, the pyramid is an antenna designed to refocus light into the two-directional two electron spiral, the negative field of the physical and the positive field of the spiritual. Okay? All right, so now he says, um, let's see. So talk about the caduceus, right? What is it? This is the symbol... Yeah, I see this in the hospitals have that symbol, the caduceus. That's one of our symbols, all right, also called the kundalini. That's what the um, Hindus call it, I believe. This come out of ancient Asia, ancient Kemet. The caduceus, which is a measurement of light, shows the two directions that electrons can spiral around. The nucleus of the atom. Its purpose is to show the degree of light in the body. Now, Tahuti says in the Kabbalion that there are three great planes of consciousness. The pure energy field in which the particles of the atom spiral are called tachyon pairs. The tachyon pairs carry an electromagnetic charge. The three electromagnetic charges of tachyon pairs are positive, 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 negative, and negative, negative. Uh, these three charges make up the three great planes of consciousness. In ancient Tamare, the Kemites or the Egyptian drawings, you will find pictures of men holding coils. These coils were tuned to the reverse flow of vortex energy generated between sites. A and B are tuned to the South Pole vortex. The stone was struck by the rod and, and turned tuned, tuned to the South Pole field. Two South Pole fields repel each other. The block would, would then float down the walkway. So he's talking about how our ancestors, ancestors were able to levitate stones because they overstood the, um, the energy uh, makeup of, of, of matter. And so they overstood how to reverse the polarity of it. And you can do that with the physical body, <laughs> okay? And and you raise your consciousness. And so he he talks about this guy right here, Edward uh, Liskinen. This guy Edward Edward Liskinen, born in 1887 and to 1951, he built uh, what is known as Coral Castle. For those who do not know, Coral Castle. It's in Florida. It's in Florida. He built this this. This darn thing. It's freaking this core castle is like he is like a it's like the pyramids. I mean, he he built this white guy, Mukasu now. The masters say he's from the planet Venus. <laughs> People didn't know that, of course. 
because uh, he, he said him and uh, and Nikola Tesla, they both were weren't from Earth. But he built he built this coral castle by himself, lifting these uh, stones. Um, this castle he talks about the three ton gate, a triangle shaped gate that weighs approximately six thousand pounds. That was balanced on the axis of a Model T Ford. He lifted these stones. This guy, this castle, lifted these stones and built this 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 coral castle. Look it up. It's in Florida. And and it and it's 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 he, you know he's built out of these big stones the same way they built the pyramids. Uh, let's see. I don't, I don't, I don't want to read into it. It just talks about how he built, the, how, you know, the, the, all of the stones he used to build this big old, you know, castle is, is magnificent. So let me go here. So question, how was this little man able to move these pieces of rock weighing 30 tons? Ed was able to move these pieces of rock because he understood the power of magnetism in the coral. The, the rocks were coral rocks, he said. And he knew the magnetism of these rocks. By the power of levitation and ability everyone has latent within them, and by uh, discipline in the body and mind, he had firm ideas about magnetism and said that he that we get magnets from the food we eat because of the magnesium in the food or magnetism in the food. He, he was said to have purchased sardines, crackers, eggs, and milk from town, but always ate green vegetables and, and trapped rabbits. So he, he had a vegetarian diet, family. When Ed moved to his new location in Homestead, he bought 10 acres of land. The card pieces of coral were moved to its new location with the aid of a friend who had a pickup truck that Ed loaded and unloaded himself without any anyone's assistance. It would seem strange that no one was able to catch him moving these blocks that weighed 30 to 40 tons each. But he worked that night by lan lantern. He always seemed to know when anyone was coming. He had like a sixth sense and would simply stop his work and patiently wait until the spies would go away. During his tours, he would also sell literature. So he he actually, he built this, this place and he gave tours for people to come and they would pay money to come see his coral castle. You know, he built it by himself, but he was a, he was a master. <laughs> he was a master, but he wasn't from earth, the master said. He says, now the pyramid itself, we focus light energy into three different electromagnetic charges of the tachyon pairs. That is why there are three chambers in the great pyramids of Khufu, the son of Sniferu. The subterranean chamber represents the physical levels of consciousness, which is the negative negative field of tachyon. The queen's chamber represents the mental plane, which is the negative positive field of tachyons and the king's chamber of the spiritual plane of consciousness. The spiritual plane has a po positive positive charge. The pyramid is a lens or antenna that refocuses light energy. The symbol of the caduceus represents the column of light energy that can be seen in the middle of the pyramid. This column of light energy combined the two directional spirals of electrons. This is what creates the properties of the mysterious pyramid power. The pyramid lens causes a mirror image that is put above that is put above ground will appear below the ground in a shadow form. This is where the statement as above, so below. So, so what happens is it creates like an image, a, a mirror image, an 
uh, energy or etheric image of the pyramid the, because of the way the design. The humans have that. We have our, your chi, your spirit body is what we call your etheric double. It's a copy of your physical body. It's a copy of your physical body. That's why in the science of curling on photography, where they're able to take a picture of your aura, like, and they say if you was to cut off your hand and they took a picture of that hand when it was cut off, like, right, took a picture of your arm now. And uh, and they use this special um, camera, this, this this special camera, electromagnetic camera, when the picture would show your your, your physical hand be gone, but you, you, it, you could see your energy hand. Your energy hand would still be there. Your spirit hand would still be there, even though your physical hand would be would gone. And because our ancestors overstood the science, that's why they was they, they knew how to regrow their limbs that way. They can regrow their limbs because their their energy hand or the spirit hand was still there. Remember, the spirit is what grows your body. This your spirit is what grows your physical body. It's what it was what germ, ge, uh, generate the physical cells. When you're on earth, you don't need a physical or you don't need a material body if you move to another planet because the energies there are different. But in order to be in an energy body, you have to move your consciousness to that to that body. You have to you have to your your consciousness has to be in tune with which you're in your spirit body, which means you have to merge your consciousness with your subconscious. And then you connect to your superconscious. Once you're in tune with your high levels of consciousness, then, then you're now connected with your spiritual self, and then you can exist in higher dimensional worlds. That this is how you escape the third density. Once you raise your consciousness, right? So when you look at the smart circle, we're in a third density. So in order to exist on a fourth density, fifth density, all the way up to nine, you have to tap into your higher states of consciousness by connecting with your spirit body, your energy body. I hope you guys are understanding this. You need to ask questions if you need to get more clarity on this. I hope I'm not confusing anyone. This is extremely important subject matter. Only the master teacher is the one explaining these details about ourselves and how to do these things. We're the ones with the right knowledge that our people don't have. <clears throat> They're stuck under religious dogma, which is miseducating them about their own nature. But as I'm showing you, all of this stuff is laid out in all of the books the master has written. Okay, so now let's see. Let's go to another part. It says um, he's talking about the uh, six-pointed star, the six-pointed star that the Jews have. There's six. There's really, really, it's really two triangles. But what the Jews do is they interlock the triangles, meaning they're cutting off the knowledge. They stole that symbol from us, your ancestors. That was the, the, the two triangles represented the pyramid, one coming up, one below. That's why I said they, they were a mirror image of this of each other. And you and you overlay one overlay the other. And that what that's what that means is you that's that reverse you're reversing the energy within your body when you overlay the other the energy part of you with the physical part. Once you become in tune, meaning the spiritual part of you becomes in tune with the physical part, you become one, right? The two pyramids become one, one on top of the other or one over the other. And so you're now in tune with your higher consciousness. The Jews took that symbol and they interlocked it to control the mind through religion. The lock your consciousness. That's why look at their star. Look at the Jewish star. And you notice it's interlocking. Ours never interlock. One overlay is one on top of the other, not interlock. Because one represent one represented the physical and the other represented the spiritual part of you. 
The Jews stole this symbol as their mogan shield. The symbol was used in the uh, Essenes village where a so-called Jew named Yahshua or Jesus of 2,000 years ago is said to have been raised. Who said in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, I stand at the door, I stand at the door and knock. Its meaning is the uniting of the two directions of light energy so that one can pass on into the spiritual world, right? That's the connecting of the two, the upward triangle, the downward triangle, the physical you, the spiritual you are united. And you now become in tune with your spiritual nature. How do you do that? Well, you do that by raising the physical, the cells of your body. I've talked about this before. You have to vibrate the cells of your body to be in tune with your spiritual body. You do that, what? Do the diet, correct diet, right? The, all of the all of the things I say about health when we when we when we read the principles of being a a, a Sabian, health positive mind sunlight water fasting herbal diet exercise rhythmic breathing meditation concentration prayer and chanting all of those things you master you do all of these things. And that's how you, you open your third eye and you become in tune with your 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 spirit, your spiritual, you know, nature. Because once you open your third eye, keep that in mind, you're in tune with your oversoul now. The way the master is. So Dr. York is in tune with his oversoul, who which is Yanun. So Yanun and Dr. York become one and the same. So, so I read it again. It's the meaning. Its meaning is the uniting of the two directions of the light energy, so that one can pass on into the spiritual world and overcome the physical world. The first step one must take to develop is their sensing ability to see and hear light energy. At this point, he or she has begun his or her initiation into the high, higher levels of consciousness. When you can see and hear light energy, when you, for instance, when you go to sleep, right? And you're dreaming, you're seeing light energy in the mind, your sub, but your subconscious is doing it. You have to do with your consciousness. You have to become in tune. That's why you gotta become in tune with your subconscious. When you can see light energy, when you're in a sleep state or a meditative state, you'll see it. Anyone who done, Anyone who, who's really serious into meditation, you'll see it. Imageries will come up in your mind. You'll, you'll start because what happens is your pineal gland, your pineal gland, it, it becomes activated. That's why when you're meditating, you activate your pineal gland. When you're meditating in darkness, you're activating your pineal gland. When you're asleep and you're dreaming, that's your pineal gland being activated. And you're able to see. What people don't know is the pineal gland has the same receptors as your physical eyes. I repeat it again. Your pineal gland has the same visual perceptors as your physical eyes do. That's what that's why they call it your third eye. You're able to see your pine because when your pineal gland is, is, is activated, it connects you with higher planes of existence. And you can see into the other dimensions. You, you're in, um, literally, you can see into other dimensions when your pineal gland is stimulated. Your pineal gland is stimulated in darkness. Your pineal gland is stimulated in darkness. Your pineal gland is stimulated in darkness. Your pineal gland. Uh, it secretes melatonin. Your pineal gland secretes melatonin. Your pineal gland secretes melatonin. What is melatonin? It's light energy. It's, it's, um, 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 it's energy. Melanin is energy that processes light. So when you, if you have melatonin in your mind, in your brain, which is what we do have it, brain neuromelanin, that's why we're able to see images like in dreams. 
And as you raise your vibration, the images become more vivid and you can move away from the dream realm into the realm of reality. That's why you can move into a higher dimension. Well, right back, Consul, that's actual facts. <clears throat> this is how we do it. This is how you raise yourself. This is how you connect to your highest states of consciousness. The key is to overcome what's the challenge, right? What's the challenge? Okay, so let's talk about how. <laughs> what's the challenge, why humans aren't doing this, why Sabians aren't doing this. What's been our biggest challenge? The biggest challenge that has been blocking us from developing our high states of consciousness is your heart center, learning to control your heart center. Now, this is a book the master teacher put out, What and Where is Hell? This is where I'm, I'm reading from. This, I'm, this is an older edition. This is page 26. This is an older edition that came out, I think, in 1995, What and Where is Hell, where he's talking about your heart center. You have to learn to control your heart center in order to do the spiritual work. It's because we're not in tune with our heart center why we can't develop ourselves spiritually. Question, what is the heart center? Answer, the heart center is not the physical heart that has four chambers and pumps blood. But it is the spiritual heart that is the meeting point between man's spiritual desires and man's cardinal desires. Human beings have been given ears for hearing, eyes for seeing, and a heart for feeling. These are not physical faculties, but the spiritual fact faculties of human beings. They are visible to man. They aid humans in their mystical powers such as their ESP, clairvoyance, dematerialization, etc. All of these super abilities are possible once humans or the Nagato really are in tune and know, know the application of their inner senses. You learn this through the ancient uh, Egyptian order. This is why the master teacher set up the spiritual orders. We had the Sufi order, and then he, which was in the 80s. Then we had the uh, ancient mystic order of Melchizedek, which was in the 90s. And now we have the ancient Egyptian order, which is in the 2000s. This is the master set up these spiritual orders to teach you how to develop yourself spiritually. Next, he goes on to say, the heart center is the midpoint of, of humans. Okay, we're not talking about mankind. This is for Nagato. Uh, and who have we have nine uh, energy centers in our body? Okay, so the middle is the center of you, your heart center, where your physical heart is. You have a spirit, your spiritual heart. We're talking about. Okay, remember, you have a spiritual counterpart to everything that's physical, you have a spiritual counterpart to that which is physical. Right, that's what we call your car. They call it your ether double. Now, question: How does the heart center affect uh, Nagato? The heart center is a point between the higher centers and the lower centers, called the cardinal points. Cardinal involves the color red. There was a spiritual light that travels through the twelve occult nerves down the spinal column into the chakras of 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 Nagato. The 12 occult nerves are related to the 12 major pairs of cranial nerves. They pass from under the surface of the brain through the openings of the bones of the cranial skull to reach the organ sensors in man's body. At present, there are normally only a few of these 12 spiritual centers open that actively affects humans' daily life. As Nagato progressed spiritually, tiny valves leading up the spinal column opened one by one. Eventually, 
the last three pairs of nerves are open. They in, in, in turn open the force of the 12 spiritual centers located in the brain. The force of these centers flood the physical form with spiritual power, which make that which makes the negato or make you aware, right? So when your body, when you flood your body with this energy, this second energy, right? It, it expands your consciousness. That's how you your third eye opens and you become in tune with your super conscious. This awareness therefore changes him or them, the negato, from being a human being, right? To to what we masters call uh, in Samuel Camille, a self-perfected being. In essence, you become a Nathar. <laughs> this is old, this is the older books of older terminology, but I'm I'm using updated terminology. You become a Nathar in essence, right? They change or transcend from being a mortal to being an immortal. Why is that? Why do you become an immortal? Because now you can move into the higher abodes. You can exist on a planet like Riss at that time. When I was reading about the planet risk, you can exist on this planet now in that state. So, so now you're you're taking on immortality. That's what that is. Question: How can Nagato become a supreme being again? Supreme being means supreme among beings, but you have fallen down to the ranks of men. You have lost the ability to use your third eye. You no longer have the power to control things, but you are controlled by them. When you become hungry, you allow your hunger to take control of you by catering to your cravings, your wants, and desires. In other words, eating. It's not even a second after you decide that you are hungry that you're en route to get food to fulfill this desire that you have. You then become a mammal, which reacts to your body's desires instead of necessity. Question, why do we let this happen to us? Answer, because you are literally out of your minds and you are controlled by your emotions, right? So this is why we're not supreme beings, family. We have to overcome desire. We talked about that. What Leviathan does for us, or does to us when we go to the principles again. Principle number two, the fight. We fight Leviathan and we have to overcome the six weapons of a Leviathan, ignorance, fear, ego, anger, bloodshed, lust, desires, lies, deception, all of those negative attributes that you see us living by. That's why we haven't been able to become supreme beings again. We have to overcome all of these negative attributes that we picked up. So because you are literally out of your minds, you are controlled by your emotions. Energy plus motions equals emotion. And emotions become dangerous when they become motion. It is these same emotions that make war, greed, lust, anger, etc. The emotion of greed is what causes you to overeat yourself into obesity. Emotions lead you to lead to what you think you need and what you feel you want. If you let your emotions control you, they will make you go out of your way to satisfy your pleasures and desires. Emotions links into motion. When you give into your emotions, you give up a part of your divinity. That means when you are angry, hungry, scared, or depressed about something, you are no longer in control of yourself, thus putting you under the rule of someone else, out of your mind. That means you've been possessed, family. <laughs> you have surrendered your divinity. And this is where gluttony can become a part of your character, which is one of the attributes of the devil or six ether and his agents. A supreme being, however, is not controlled by these things because a supreme being 
lives for the spirit and not for the body. A supreme being no longer has to sleep because he or she feels tired. A supreme being no, no longer has to eat when he or she's stomach growls because a supreme being is in control of his or her physical desires. The physical desires are not in control of the supreme being. That does not mean that if you have been hungry at one time or another and you ate or you let your emotions take control of you at some point in your life or all of your life that you have surrendered your divinity forever, you can regain it back. Question. How can you get your divinity back if all your life you have been letting your emotions take over? Answer. A person le learns to become supreme through positive prayer, positive meditation, proper exercise, proper diet, cheerfulness, unselfishness, patience, and remembrance of the creative force, pa pa ut, pa nathado. This will enable you to once again regain the use of your third eye, becoming supreme beings once again. What we, the, the, what the rebirth of the elite few, the 144,000 is all about. That's why it is said they will be able to leave the physical body and raise up. They will no longer need the physical and the material realm. So that's what I keep saying, right? That's how you can exist on the higher realms. You, you can't use your physical body because remember, this body is for the earth. This body is for the earth. When you go into higher dimensional realms, they have different energies there. So you would take on the, the, the material body of that realm. I hope, I hope you always stand that. So you don't need the physical body in those higher realms. <sighs> but you have to overcome desire. There's no way you can you can uh develop yourself spiritually if you're a slave to desire. But but what's what's causing the desire? The spirit beings, family. What's causing the desire? The spirit beings. That's where the problem is. The, you know the negative spirits that that that's plaguing us. That's why I talked about these these books. Um, the master is explaining how to overcome these negative forces. Actual facts number twenty nine: reflection and projection, where the master teacher is explaining how to overcome these negative spirit forces that's plaguing us. The patara called the mind's eye. How to overcome these negative spirit forces. Lekum, my beloved Nawapu, Corado, Nawapians, children of Wudan about this about the seeing of Tayaf, ghosts, Kao, spirits, specters, and Ethereans. I, Panabab Yanun, have spoken much only to warn you of the dangers of those who use jasad flesh and demand blood to attract disembodied spirits in their religions or rituals. For you, Nawab Ul, to know the best way to contact your relatives who link you to your Salafu ancestors, the Panathado. Many people claim they see Kao spirits of the dead. Many people claim they see disembodied beings. Many people claim they see goats. Many people claim they see Nisabu relatives. Many people claim they see religious figures. Many people claim they see ancient Egyptians, the Nathado. Many people claim they see angelic beings. Many people claim they see demons. Many people claim they see extraterrestrials. Most see all these according to what they think fear or believe. If they belong to a religion, no, it's always from their own faith what they experience. Christians always see what they accept from the New Testament. 
Satanists always see what they accept from Satanism. The Yoruban and Santerias always see what they accept in Yoruba. Muslims and their Sufis always see what they accept in their Quran or Sunnah or Hadith and sayings of Islamism. Israelites, Hebrews, Jews will always see what they accept in their Old Testament, the Torah and other Jewish records and Talmudic traditions and other books they believe in. The same for Hindus, Buddhists, Zoroastrians, the Baha, Rastafarians, Confucians, Native American shamans, and the same with all religions and religious beliefs. And also with those that believe in extraterrestrials, they all will claim to see what they have accepted in their belief systems. Many out of fear of death, many out of fear of afterlife, many out of, out of cinemas, books, or things they experience in this world. Some even have created in the mind's eye things to see, monsters and the likes. You see, all you see, all you hear, all you experience or created in your mind's eye becomes real to you. You store these images in your subconscious mind. You are able to retrieve them at will like an undeveloped film on file in your subconscious mind. You pull them up and process them as real. When, when they could have been only a dream or an exaggeration in a dream state or a fear or trauma or terror in an awoke state. Something or someone frightens you and your mind's eye exaggerates it into what you think you saw or felt. This is stored in the subconscious mind as a real event or thing. It becomes real in your mind as time and space is a reality when in fact you created them in your mind's eye. A person may see in or with the mind's mind's inner eye. A vision or a dream or frightened cinema then later see a ghost, a spirit, a specter, an ET while you are awake with eyes open. Your ears are clear for sound or touch and you really think you see this thing. You have processed your, you have processed your vision from your mind. For you see, in order to see, you must use your brain as well as your eyes. Light in the form of shape, form, and colors enter your eyes. The light is reflected from the object that enters the corner of the eye. There it is refracted, bent as it goes through the pupil and through the iris or lens of the eye. The refraction causes the rays of light to cross within the eye. When the rays cross, the image of the objects are inverted, which is turned upside down and projected off the retina. That projective light or radiant energy is then turned into chemical energy in the retina. Therefore, the light or image is reversed, upside down, projected to a screen inside your head behind your eyes connected to your nerves. This image sends a message of to the brain and the brain computes what is on that screen as then reverses it upright and projects it outside, outside back at the image of what it is as it was when you perceived. Yet you see it as you think of it or remember it the way you feel about it. If you fear a thing as a child, you may look at an up unknown adult you see as a giant before you. You don't remember that is recognized, so you become frightened. The person may not mean you any harm, yet you created what you needed to protect your body. Or an animal such as a dog may look like a monster to you 
if you don't recognize it and saw its teeth. You then store this image in your subconscious mind, in your mind's eye. He or it was a giant monster. Once you go to the subconscious world of dreams, you recreate this monster, part man, part dog. You have a werewolf, and now it's chasing you with great big teeth. Where did this come from? It was stored in parts over time in your mind's eye, the subconscious world of dreams. Yet Noapians, remembering how the eye actually works. Once you receive an image of light, you process it and then project it back out of the eyes as an image. You can do this while awake and from your own creation uh, from that file of undeveloped images with your own construction of them and how you want to see them, then project them outward. That is not even there. Yet is a projection of your subconscious file of images with emotions to become what you want to see, such as your Jesus or an angel or a relative or a demon all created by you and projected from inside out and you really think you see it. This is religious spookism I speak of, most created by fear, God, or you are going to be tortured in a hell's fire forever once you die. Inner or outer visions projected outward from dreams or experiences while asleep or awoke. This is what happens in most religious experiences because they don't want facts or confirmation. They walk by faith, not by sight. They're willing to look yet not touch. In visions or dreams or reality, you see spirits or specters. It can be real or not. Most of this is happening right inside of your mind's eye, inside of you. It's your own experience. It's real to you. Why most are alone when they see things or experience things, even if it appears to be outside of you. This is because the brain can project images back out of the eyes that seems real because to the brain, they are real, yet only you see them. Now, this can be done by the 27 spirits inside of you. I say 27 and not 30 because minus you, one less is 29. If your two parents are still alive in this physical world, that is minus two more from the 30. So three minus 30 is 27 spirit beings that exist in your genes, your own relatives. They can affect your thinking, your moods, your health, your actions, your dreams, your visions, spirit or spirits within at work, evil or good beings who once lived in flesh. Many wish to use your flesh to please their own emotions loss. It can be deception or guidance, yet they don't come from out of this dimension. They are here, many trapped here by their lusts of this world. So once you die, they are trapped here, yet you can't feel it's a form of hell to them. So once they die, excuse me. So once they die, they are trapped here, yet can't feel it's a form of hell to them. Guys, these are family members that are stuck in the, in the lower bowls. They're trapped in a plane of force. And they plague humans. They plague us, these spirits. So they seek to use bodies. The easiest way is when a person is intoxicated, drugged, drunk, with strong emotions of anger, jealousy, hating, and lusting. These emotions open this dimension to the underworld of this same dimension. The, the nine lower gates and people in those states have walk-ins and become possessed. Do things in those states they would never have done if their conscious mind was not subdued by intoxicants or a rush of emotions. 
another is outside persuasion, as in to join a group, like a uniform, a military, a police force, law enforcement, and you are persuaded to kill for them. So you come under this effect, sleep or awake. You can lose self-control by persuasion or possession. It's all affecting your inner being by forces other than yourself. This is why Wunawap teaches you to know your own voice, your own tone from those of your ancestors to prevent whisperers from whispering to you suggestions. Things you would never have done, you did because of these emotions of suggestions from the 27 spirits inside or evil people outside who use others to do their evils like governments. They use pleasures such as pornography. The effect it has in transforming one's mind and affect their physical body to react. The same thing happens in persuasion by inside and outside visions such as how a commercial makes you want to spend money you don't have by watching others who seem to be having fun or pleasures make you want the same. So you go to them or where they gather for this. It may not be safe or healthy, yet you begin to partake of that dimension or world or whatever. It affects your soul and your body. You see an attractive person, they attract you. You don't see them inside only the outside attract you into their world. This can be a so-called friend who says, let's go there. Let's try this. Here, take this or drink this, smoke this. You are affected for life by that one act. So it happens from both inside you and outside of you. So your good relatives or Salafu ancestors only wish to help you. This is the voice that says, don't go. Don't do this or that stay away from him or her. The physical desire takes over your divine being and you submit to your pleasures. Or you are stronger will and say, no, I would, I pass, not me. This is your inner powers at work. So family, when you're doing spiritual work, you have to overstand the lower forces that are inside of us just as much as the negative forces that are on, a, on the outside of us trying to take you off the path to create illusions and delusions. You must learn to discern the difference. This is why we have the power to reason. This is why the master teacher written so much right knowledge so that you can discern negative spirits, six ether forces, from higher spirits, not eat the forces. Who to listen to, who not to listen to. This is the basis of, of what we call psychic self-defense. So I highly recommend those who get access to this book, it's more to it, as well as the other book I recommend, and in, in fact, everything I recommend to help you on your, your, on your development, right? To develop your consciousness, to tap into your higher states of consciousness. There's so much more to this topic, but we're at our end. We covered a lot. Highly recommend this, to listen to this over and over again so you can get a grip on, on this subject matter. The master has written other books on consciousness. We, we have the Mind Scroll for those who may know about that. It's an older book. Also, The Wisdom of Tahuti is an older book that was came out in 2000 that deals with the mind as well. Highly recommend that for your own personal edification, for those who want to be transformed back into immortals, how to exist on a higher abode. You have to raise your consciousness and you have to overcome your desires. There is no other way. And with that being said, it is nine. We're gonna do our close out namas, our prayers. Uh, for those who are familiar with it, we do our namas or prayers in our lahaj sabayik. Highly recommend you guys follow that for your own spiritual development. 
these 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 namas or prayers is about communicating with your ancestors, putting your mind on your ancestors, making direct communication with them so that you won't be p- persuaded by the lower forces. Keep your mind on your ancestors. Keep your mind on the Nathar. And as you're developing yourself spiritually, you, you will become more and more aware and more and more cognate of them. That way, no one or nothing, no forces will be able to trick you as you're developing. So, <clears throat> with that being said, let's get started. Follow along, family. And for those who are new, just read the English uh, portion of it. And as you learn the language, you can also do it in the in the language of tones. Tones is key. Language is key. That's what helps. Uh, uh, it enhances your vibration to put you in tune with the Nathar, with your family. Let's get started. By day, kalal namasa wufag ko amar kasemun shalal poot pa takyu anuki jawab pa ashuk impa poot wu kala ashuk kawun jawab niya anuki kasemun impa poot. Wupa put kawun kasemun emnia Anuki wahu ama pa put Wupa put kawun wahu ama nia Naku kudo naju ama kasemun empa put Wu kabu ama muskasun Naku kudo kawan kale pafaf naku de ya jawab pa put Ama wase ama de yani kawun lake baku jawab pa put Anuki ya babi nafasni Pa put kawun Anuki, pa put kador, nakuk kador, pa put amu, nakuk amu, lahehum manehnun, lahehum manehnun, ahumata karehum, ahumata karekum, ahumata karenun, ahumata jewefnia, ahumata nia wu anuki hum, ya ye ashuk re e, asmua jaye nun, ya ye no taru afuk nun, Anunata mukrado kum, Yaye no taru afuk noon, Afuk noon, Afuk noon, Yaye no taru noon, Ah noon, Ah tun, Ah tun, Ah moon. Namazo wahoo, Yaye mufaku. Ya ye who, ya ye who, ya ye no taru. Ya ye so ye, ya ye so ye, ya ye no taru. Ya ye hika, ya ye hika, ya ye no taru. And kum at the palm of Aku. Ya ye who, ya ye who, ya ye no taru. And kum at the palm of Aku. Wu anu at the mukrado kum. Wu and kum at the muisanun. Ya ye who, ya ye who, ya ye no taru. Aro muklas nun atum reye, ya ye hu, ya ye hu, ya ye nataru, namazo atu aron hu. Ya ye mukdam wa funun, an kumane ya kelo dudu muslafu nun, wu muisa o nun, mane ya ke sawura pa ba, mane ya ke kawuna ka u, mane ya ke ata akak, mane ya ke kawuna basha wu damem. Ya ye na taru muktam unun, aro muftanun, and who kumun manzam and ne pan a taru, aro and who, and who kumun baba yenanun, aro and who, and who kumun atum re, aro and who, and who kumun haro, namazo talu. Ya ye na taru muslafu nun, a foot nun mene pan mujwau, a foot nun mene gaha en. Ya ye no taru a foot noon, Mane sayah yara, a foot noon, a foot near, a foot noon, a foot near, Ya ye no taru noon, Namazo rabu, pa takmui. Nakuk talub takmui be pa no taru, Mane pa la en lawi tenanu, Kaleh ran of atni atta, La he pa no taru, Wu kale namazo atni at atta la he pa. At the hair, Kayat Yatum, the Yapa, and the Taru, Passawa, who part to up. My name is Fark a wound, Passawa, who part to up. Zika wound and Azula, the hair and coom. My name is Bat, who massa. A man had day and un, 
wo damaun mane muslafu kum wo nataru ajula yena fasu kum afuk shene kawun kum pa sawa wo pa taru pa hadayan wo pa dama an nun tawa an kum la ha panan dama wo shafa an nun tawa an kum la ha tam nasuinun an nun tawa an kum la ha ashukuma an kum at muslafunu an nun at mukhrarukum an nun talub nasakuma an nun talub nasakuma an so nun kahen taru an so nu muslafu nun an un at musbat u a nu a tu a tu a mun ya ye na taru nun ya ye muftau ya ye na taru ya ye atum re Ya ye no tar, ya ye noon, ya ye no tar, ya ye noon tat, ya ye no tar tat, ya ye ha, ya ye no tar, ya ye ha tat, ya ye no tar tat, ya ye cock, ya ye no tar, ya ye cock tat, ya ye no tar tat, ya ye amun, ya ye no tar, ya ye amun tat. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye atun. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye shashash. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye tafaf na tat. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye sabab. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye nak tat. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye aras tat. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye asa. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye na bab tat ha tat. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye satah. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye hara. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye hap twi. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye a nak tat. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye a ha hara twi. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye na far tun. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye man tu. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye bab ti. Ya ye na tar, ya ye sechem tat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye hata hara tat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye baibis, ya ye na tar, ya ye patata, ya ye na tar, ya ye basasat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye imhatat, ya ye na tar, ya ye hu, ya ye na tar, ya ye matat, ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye my heart, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye khafaf re, ya ye na tar, ya ye miskinat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye re tat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye khintimit to you, ya ye na tar, ya ye hika, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye mat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye renen tat. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye shy. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye sushat. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye mafdat. Ya ye na tar tat. Ya ye saba. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye ana. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye khanun. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye khanas. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye patata noon. Ya ye na tar. Ya ye so ye, ya ye na tar, ya ye hak tat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye amas, ya ye na tar, ya ye sarap tui, ya ye na tar, ya ye atun re, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye dehu tui, ya ye na tar, ya ye patata warat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye sakar tat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye ha. Ya ye na tar, ya ye na heb ka, ya ye na tar, ya ye sakar, ya ye na tar, ya ye ba, ya ye na tar, ya ye akar, ya ye na tar, ya ye imharatat, ya ye na tar tat, ya ye wapawatat, ya ye na tar, ya ye sakhat hatap tat, 
Yah ye na thar tat. Yah ye merdi tat sakar tat. Yah ye na thar tat. Yah ye so ye tat. Yah ye na thar tat. Yah ye kara tat. Yah ye na thar tat. Yah yah ye a sat inu. Yah ye na thar. Yah ye bahat tat. Yah ye na thar tat. Yah ye khanem tat. Yah ye na thar tat. Yah ye manak tat. Yah ye na thar tat. Yah ye khanem tat. Ya ye chamem, ya ye na thar, ya ye mahatwi, ya ye na thar, ya ye kabesin in a faf, ya ye na thar, ya ye damata a faf, ya ye na thar, ya ye meri tat, ya ye na thar tat, ya ye na sat, ya ye na thar, ya ye imdadat tat, ya ye na thar tat, ya ye na chakbatat, ya ye na thar tat, ya ye sakhat tat. Ya ye na thar tat, ya ye anak tat, ya ye na thar tat, ya ye the dad, ya ye na thar, ya ye tum, ya ye na thar, ya ye wahu, ya ye na thar, ya ye yasas, ya ye na thar, ya ye anak, ya ye na thar, ya ye afterwit, ya ye na thar, ya ye satat, ya ye na thar tat, ya ye sakatwi. Ya ye na thar, ya ye imat, ya ye na thar, ya ye na na, ya ye na thar, ya ye imnuit, ya ye na thar, ya ye imsataktwi, ya ye na thar, ya ye mukdal tat, ya ye na thar tat, ya ye warahashafaf, ya ye na thar, ya ye maratwi, ya ye na thar, ya ye amun hrae, ya ye na thar. Yeah, who and at the college of Wef Paut Ah Noon Re Ah Toon Re Ah Toon Re Ah Moon Re Yeah. Amen. 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 Very good, very good. All righty, all righty, all right. All right, Muisar. Remember, remember, remember the rituals are key. The rituals are key for your own spiritual development, for the purpose of re resurrecting, for the purpose of raising your consciousness. As you raise your consciousness, you're able to accomplish more things. As you raise your consciousness, you're able to accomplish more things. As you raise your consciousness, you're able to accomplish more things. This is why we teach these rituals to take on the nine mind. Only the nine mind can overcome the six. Only the nine mind can overcome the six. So if we're wondering why we haven't achieved our goals as a people, it's because we've yet to learn how to harness the nine mind to expand our consciousness. That way we can counter everything the children of six does. We've yet to counter what they're doing. And that's because we've yet to really truly learn how to harness the nine mind. The rituals are key. The rituals are key. The rituals are key. There are no exceptions to this. No exceptions. Now, with that being said, as I always say, watch this again. Watch this again. I watch my own lectures again for my own personal edification. So if I have to do it over and over again, 
You too need to do it over and over again for your own personal edification, for those who want to raise themselves up, for those who want to expand their consciousness, right? Also, for those who are on Clubhouse, I will be on Clubhouse tomorrow. We're having a discussion there on there as well, starting at 12.30 p.m. sharp, 12.30 early, uh, early noon sharp. We're talking about black people are not citizens, right? Black people are not citizens of the United States. So that's uh, what our discussion is going to be about tomorrow. For definitely those who have time, join us. Check us out <clears throat> with that discussion. Also become members of nupocc.com. Become members, family support. Go to nupo.org. Uh, uh, click on become a member and support. We can't grow without your support. We cannot grow without your support. We cannot grow without your support. We're in this together. We're in this together. We're in this together. And until then, bless you all. We saw it. Bless you all. Why do? Thank <laughs> you.